Over the next few lessons, I want to start adding some more features to the game. Things like spells, skills, recipes, crafting, armor, enchanting weapons. And once we add all those features, we're going to have a lot that needs to be tested. If we manually test it, there's a good chance we'll make some mistakes, we'll miss some things. So we're going to create a unit test project, which will let us create a whole series of automated tests that we can run in a few seconds to make sure that nothing's broken. The first thing we need to do is open the solution. And then you'll right click on the solution in Solution Explorer. Select Add. New Project. And then under Visual C Sharp, under the Test, we want to add a unit test project and make sure it's .NET Framework. For the name, choose Test Engine. I've already created this project in my solution, so I won't do it now. But this Test Engine project is going to have all of our automated tests for the Engine project. You don't have to name your test project so that it matches up with your, your model and your view model project, but I like to do that so that way there's an easy connection between what object is being tested and where it's being tested. Then inside the Test Engine project, you need to right click on References, select Add Reference, and then make sure you check the Engine project because we need to see the classes in the Engine project. Those are the ones we're going to test, those are the ones we're going to instantiate, so we need to have access to them. When you create your test project, it's going to start out with a default file called unit test one. You can delete that one from the project. We're going to add our own in. And then within the test project, I added a new folder. And in this case, I matched it view model with our view model folder. So it matches the structure in our engine project. For the next step, we'll create the actual unit test class. You'll right click on your view models folder, select add, then new item. And then over in the Visual C Sharp items, click on test and select basic unit test. For the name, I used test game session because this is going to be the unit test for the game session class. Again, it doesn't have to have this name. It doesn't have to match up like this with your engine class, but this makes it really obvious as to where the tests are and what object is being tested. I'll cancel mine since I already created it and I'll just pull it up here on the screen. Inside the test game session class, the first thing you need to do is add this using engine.viewmodels on line one. This is so the test game session class can see the game session object, which is in a different namespace, the engine view models, and not the test engine view models namespace. And then I'll go through the test that I've created here. Notice on line six, before the line where we say public class test game session, we have this open bracket test class close bracket. This is how we declare that this class is a unit test class. On lines 10 through 16, we have a standard function. It's public void test create game session. And this is where we're going to do our automated testing. But notice on line nine, we have an attribute here, test method. This is another way to just declare that this function is a unit test function. There are some different ways to run your unit test and these identifying markers, the test class and the test method, need to be present in your class so that the, the unit test runner knows, aha, this is a test class, I need to look in here for unit test, and then it sees this test method and it says, ah, this is a test function I need to run. For this first test, all we're going to do is instantiate a game session object here on line 12, save it to this game session variable, and then we're going to do some simple tests on it, some simple assertions. The asserts on line 14 or 15, these are our actual 
test. The assert means we expect this condition to be true. Check to make sure if it is true. So here on line 14, we have assert dot is not null game session dot current player. Because when we instantiate a game session object on line 12, it should create a default player. Our assertion is that this current player should not be null. If the current player is null, then this assertion is going to fail. It's going to say, hey, I expected an object to be here in the property. It's not there. Your test failed. Our next test is on line 15. Here we're going to assert that two values are equal. And the first value is town square. We've got a comma here for the second value. And this is game session current location dot name. So when you instantiated a game session object, your default starting location is the town square. So we're going to check that the object's current location name is town square. If it's not, then we know we have a problem. And then this assertion would fail and we get an error message when we run the unit test. But if all the assertions pass, everything is what we expect it to be, then this unit test is going to succeed. This is a pretty simple test, so we'll go on to the second one we have added here on lines 18 to 27. Notice that we have the test method attribute in front of the function, so the test runner knows this is a unit test. And this one I gave it the name test player moves home and is completely healed on killed because when the player gets killed in a battle, they should go to their home location and they should be completely healed. And we're going to test to make sure that that actually happens. So we instantiate our game session object on line 21 on line 23. We say game session, current player take damage 999 hit points, which since the player only starts out with 10 hit points should kill the player which should cause the player to move to their home and be completely healed. And we're going to check for that on lines 25 and 26. On 25, we're checking to see if the two values are equal, home and game session current location dot name. Now that the player's moved home, their current location should change and the name should be home. And on line 26, we're going to assert that the game session current player level times 10 and the player should be level one to start. So this should be 10. We want to make sure that that value matches the game session current player current hit points. They took the damage, they moved home, they were healed and their current hit points matches their level times 10. That's the assertion we're going to have. Now we'll run these two tests. I'm going to do that by right clicking on the test project in the solution explorer and then finding run unit tests. And after a couple seconds, we get the screen pop up and tell us the results. And if you notice, we've got some red circles with a dash through it. If we expand this, we see the first test passed test, create game session passed but the test player moves home, that one failed. We can get some more details from it. And it says here the test through an exception. We had a null reference exception on line 293 of the game session class. This is in the on current player killed function. So let's go take a look at that. So here we are in game session line 293. We have raise message. The current monster dot name killed you. I've already tracked down the cause of this error and it's because there is no current monster. So there's no current monster dot name and that's where our null reference is. That's because in our unit test, we instantiated the game session object, but we never actually moved to a location with a monster in reality in our game this raise message on line 293 of game session should never have an error 
because the only way you would be killed is by a monster, which would mean you have a current monster value. But this does kind of expose a potential problem. We can either fix the unit test by modifying the unit test code to put it an object in the current monster property, or we can go into the game session class and do something that will eliminate the error from happening. I'm going to take the simple route and just change our message on line 293 of game session to say, you have been kill killed. In the future, we may have the ability for the game to have the player be killed by poison that happens over time or by a spell, something other than a monster. So it's probably a good idea to take that current monster name out of the on player killed function. And it's the simplest thing to do for right now. So this is what we'll do. If we want to do something in the future where we can make this message so that it's a little more specific, we can add that in later but we don't want to start designing too far ahead of ourselves. So now if we go back to our unit test and rerun them, we see they're both green. They both pass, which is what we want to see whenever we run our unit test. If you have some other plugins in Visual Studio, like I have ReSharper, you might see something on the left of your test game session class, these green circles. These are another way to run all the unit tests in the class, or you can just run a specific unit test if you want. There's also the test menu option at the top where you can run from here, select run and all test. And now you'll see your test over here on the left sidebar for Visual Studio. And we can just expand that to see all of the tests. There are several different ways you can run the tests and you can even set this up so that we can do continuous integration. So every time we make a change and check it into the source control, then the source control triggers something that runs all the unit test. But for right now, we're just going to do it manually and kind of get familiar with the unit test for the future lessons. As I add more classes, I'll add more unit tests. They're almost all going to be using the game session object because that's our view model and that's how we communicate between the view and between the model objects. And our unit tests are kind of another interface. They're going to communicate with the view model to do things to model objects and check on results. So it's kind of like uh, running the program without a user interface. As always, I'll have a link below this video if you're watching this on YouTube that goes to the support page. It will have all the source code, some screenshots as to where to add in the unit test project and the unit test class. And you can leave your questions and comments there so I can answer anything you may have a question about.